When it comes to migrating fish, the animal that immediately springs to mind is the salmon. It's born up in rivers, swims all the way down to the sea to grow up, and all the way back up rivers to mate and putting in some serious mileage. But there is a fish that makes the salmon look positively bone idle. I've come to the River Parrot in Somerset, one of the best rivers in the UK for eels. Incredibly, by the time they reach here, they've already traveled over three and a half thousand miles. As migrations go, it's one epic journey. Every single eel found in Europe is born on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, off the coast of Bermuda in the Sargasso Sea. The eggs hatch and the tiny eels drift for three years in the Gulf Stream until they reach our shores. Then they change into small glass eels and start to migrate up into many of our rivers. Locks are a major obstacle to their journey upstream and here at Oathlock, the Environment Agency have built a special structure to allow the eels to pass. So this is what an eel-friendly lock looks like, is it? Exactly. Now we've got the substrate on the pass there with water coming down it. That attracts eels up it and they literally worm their way up through the substrate and that there's our camera. We record every image we see. Recording the number of young eels called elvers they see provides information on the population in this river. All the images from the camera are relayed to this building. So you've got some eel footage to show me. Yeah, we have. So here's an elver coming up. Really using the bristles to yeah, make its way up the there. Yeah, there's the curve of its body there. And they literally do worm their way through. And although there's water running down there, they are adapted to be outside of water for some time, aren't they? That's right. Certainly in their adult phase, um, when they're heading downstream, they can cross fields. As long as there's rain and water on the, the surface that they're travelling across, they can stay out of water for a couple of hours. Once the elvers have made it upstream, they can live in our rivers for up to 30 years. I'm at a tributary of the River Parrot, and it's here that the eels will come and spend most of their life getting bigger and bigger, and it's these adults that I'm hoping to see. But it's not just regular fishing I'm doing. For a bit of zap, it's time for some electric fishing. A team from the Environment Agency keep track of our eel population and to check on their condition, they first need to catch them. A very mild electric charge from this ring temporarily stuns the fish, and that makes them much easier to net. Is it safe for me to come down, Pete? It is, we've switched off now. OK. A bit a big one. That's not bad. Eee! Fantastic! It is uber, uber slippery and really strong. Yeah, there's just no holding on to them, is there? This one is about six years old, and all the eels caught need to be measured. I thought I could help, but I didn't realise they had found such a whopper. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm not going to cope with that one. OK, right, if you kneel down in front of the measuring board... Yeah. ..and what you want to do is to pick one of those eels up and put it in the groove... Okay. In the upturned bucket. Well, since this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, I've got to go for the big one. Oh, 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 you slithery, slithery thing. Come back, come back. Oh. <laughs> this is absurd. I'm not going to be beaten by an eel. It's, oh, it's really wriggly. Oh, oh there we go. <sighs> This is a healthy female over half a metre long. What's so incredible about eels is that all the adults have to swim back from our rivers to the Sargasso Sea, three and a half thousand miles away before they can breed. And when they've bred once, they die. They surely are the most bizarre long distance travellers in the world. Ellie will be joining us tomorrow night, telling us what wildlife we can look forward to in November. Just